Welcome. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's January 4th, 2023. Happy New Year. Topics that I've got on the agenda, security reviews for UX pull requests, user feature flag status report. Uh, I don't know without Vodak here if we'll actually do that one. I'm going to move it to the end in case Vodak doesn't make it. Yahoo UI removal. Tim, is it okay if that one's on the list or would, is there anything you want to put there? Nothing to add. Okay. All right. So take that one off. Feedback on UI, on UI UX regressions was a topic last month. So I brought it forward. Keyboard usability was a topic last month, but I wasn't sure if there was anything we needed there. Are there, and then I assume what's next in UI and maybe we should have, should we have a topic that is what's happened recently in UI? Because we got a bunch of, of interesting pull requests merged in the most recent weekly. Any other topics that you want on the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead and get started. Are these topics okay? Are they any that you would recommend? So someone wants to recommend, hey, drop that topic from the list. Okay, then let's start with the list. So security reviews for UX pull requests. Tim, this has been an ongoing question we ask each, each month as we meet. Um, how is it going? Is it working? Do you have any insights you want to share there? Uh, I think it's going okay at the moment. There's just one waiting review at the moment. Only one that is awaiting review. Okay, good. So the the security team is keeping up and and not it's not there's not a large backlog, particularly with the end of year holidays. Having one sitting in review is not not terribly surprising. Okay, good. Anything else on that topic? Okay, then let's go on to the next. How to collect general feedback on UI and UX regressions. And in the last session, the discussion had been around, let's see, where was it? Maybe I'm off base and even creating the issue. Oh, yes. So the question was JIRA issues, new issues with appropriate labels, and cleaning up old issues. Any comments from those in the in the session about, about the topic? Because we're currently using the regression tag or regression label to flag all regressions, right? So whether they're UX or not. The only issue that I've seen has been um, adding the uh, regression label before something has been triaged. Um, so the most efficient process that I've seen has been to, if you're reporting a regression, to also triage it at the same time and find the the original commit that introduced the regression and uh, and, and also to comment on the original change. So that kind of starts the process of discussion and resolution as quickly as possible. Um, but when that isn't, when, when the original change isn't known, there's some work to be done to discover it. Um, so um, the, I think I, what I've been doing is using the untriaged label, the UX untriaged label to indicate, you know, hey, there's more um, bisection that we need to do before we can identify which change caused the regression. And and are you you finding that's working? I'm a little worried that the UX untriage label, label may have quite a queue 
certainly if the submitter does the bisect, I can see why that's the most efficient. That then lets others immediately say, oh, what shall we do about this? Whereas if somebody else has to bisect, it's there's real work to do the bisect. Yeah, there's real work either way. Um, so um, it's just a matter of finding the time to do it. But it's it's important to be it's important work to do. Okay. Any other any other? I'm not sure what more to go with there. We'll continue. It sounds like we'll continue using the UX untriage label. Uh, we'll continue encouraging submitters to do the bisect themselves, so that we identify which exact commit. I guess the other is we continue encouraging people to use small commits so that the target of a bisect is, is a, a relatively narrow scope change that if it had to be reverted, could be reverted without major damage to other things. Yeah, okay. I think a while back I had offered to um, provide help with people who are interested in learning how to do bisection more efficiently. Because uh, I over the last few months, I've come up with a process that works pretty well for me, at least. Um, for example, you know, I skip compiling the tests because you don't need to run any tests when you're bisecting. So I figured out kind of how to make that feedback loop as tight as possible. Um, so if, if there are if there are people that are struggling with, you know, learning how to do that, I can definitely help people out. Uh, that might be a good thing for the doc sig, Kevin. Kevin, I wonder if Basil, do you think that's something? If you and I did a session, or you and I and Kevin did a session, we might consider asking Kevin to do some writing to describe the process and put it in the developer section. That could work. I'd be more than happy to work on something like that. That sounds like a great addition, or that something that would be really useful going forward. So. Good. All right. Thanks. Okay. Anything else on the general feedback on UI and UX regressions? Okay. Next topic then was keyboard usability. And I think this was Christina. And Christine is not with us today, so I'm prone to move this to the end of the list. Are there any others who had topics on keyboard usability that they wanted to discuss? Okay, so I'm going to take that out of the list then. Next topic then was what's happening recent what's happened recently in UI improvements. And here the thoughts that I had were we could look at the, the most recent change log from Jenkins.io and see quite a number of places where, where there have been improvements added. Are there any things, Tim, that you would like to highlight? Uh did you want to show your ones first? Uh, I could, well, yours are more, truthfully, yours are more valuable. If you've got anything you would like to share, I would rather go to yours first. Mine are just looking sort of at the history. Um, yep. Um, let me just check quickly. Let's hope there's some plugin updates. Looks like someone's been too quick updating plugins. Um, just give me one six if I've got. No, I don't have it quite ready. Um, Let's we'll see what else. I, I can I can give a reason. I can give a quick demo. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. We'll let you switch and and take up the demo. Uh, okay, so. I need to allow Zoom to get to my screen, which probably means I have to rejoin. Okay. One sec.
Okay, can you see um, weekly.ci.chickens.io? Yes. Cool. So, um, okay, so a few things went in the last uh, couple of releases. Um, one of them is that um, console log and a few other pages have now got a um, breadcrumb. So it goes all the way over to console output rather than finishing here. Um, so it's over a number of pages, um, but that's clearly a prominent one to show. Um, the advanced button has had a facelift. Um, so you show CI, Jenkins IO. Um, so this is the, on the LTS version. Uh, it's only advanced here. I'll just create a dummy freestyle and delete it. Okay, so here you got this advanced button here with the dot dot dots. Um, and if you'd modified a field and then saved it and then reloaded it, uh, you'd also get a little Okay, in some cases you get an icon next to it that um, showed that the fields inside it have been modified. Um, so in here, just to show them, um, it's changed from advanced dot 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 to um, advanced with a little arrow, which changes depending on what state it's set. Um, and then there's a little icon that goes next to it when you've modified the value. It says edited here, the tooltip. Nice. So now I can I can go I can hide advanced again. I can hide advanced, whereas before I had no way to hide it except to save the page and return. Yep. Yep, exactly. The other button will stick around and then you can hide and reopen. Um file upload has um was has been styled. Um so rather than the default browser styling, um there's now a um, style to look like the rest of our buttons. Um, and there's a new jelly component as well to wrap that up. Um, and uh, management links have now um, had badge items icon support added. Um, so next to manage plugins, if someone hadn't been so quick updating plugins, there'd be a a little badge here showing telling you how many um sorry does that one hold on that one might not be merged yet uh i think that one's still open is it yeah okay yeah so one of them's still open uh so it's not managed not on the badge um so on the management links page badge is now a component previously it was added as, as a custom um definition just for managed plugins um, now it's a component, extensible component that anyone can use on the Manage Jenkins page. So it's currently used for Manage Plugins and for Manage Old Data. Um, there will be a count up here and a tooltip. Um, and there's an open pull request which also adds it to the Manage Plugins page on the right here with a count showing how many available plugin updates and also makes badges available in um, the context menu um, and so it's not just in the plugin manager it's a it's part of our task so anyone using our task can also add a badge as well so so on this page for instance would it be within your your idea of how things should be if the installed plugins had a badge that said how many plugins were installed or how how are there some things you can highlight of ways we should be considering using these badges to make the experience better. Uh, yeah, there's some guidelines in here. Um, so yeah, don't overwhelm it, just use it where it makes sense. Um, so you wouldn't put badges on everything, um, but just um, say like, if you've got an admin monitor up here, there's already an example of a badge like concept, which shows you like a notification count. Got it. Okay, so so it would probably not be wise that implied labels plugin 
puts up the count of, la of label implications that have been defined, that's not actually that helpful. This should be things that are that are quite valuable to the user before we put them on a badge. Yeah, there's um in the prototype, there's I think there's a few examples in um, of some badges as well on the builds um, card. Um, so here's like a kind of different sort of badge concept, but kind of shows where the pushes came from. So it's just this shows that it was a push from GitHub, um, whereas this was a build triggered um, by myself. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a different sort of concept. I'm not sure if there's any others. No, I think that's the that's the only one. Um, apart from that, um, there was a couple of bugs fixed. Um, when you apply changes, it no longer prompts you um, saying, are you sure? Um, because you've already saved it. Um, and we've reverted the label destructive buttons dismiss as the, um, we just, with the current button design, the admin, the admin monitor contrast just couldn't really work with um, with the buttons. It needs a, some sort of tweaks or button changes, um, but there's no there was no uh, small fix that we could see. Um, previously, um, just a couple of minor fixes that have been open for a while. When when you coll collapse the build queue. Uh, so build executed widget. Um, it was this was completely misaligned. So just just a recent bug fix. It used to touch the side, probably still does on CI. If you collapse this pane here, so just touching the edge. So it was a recent mm -hmm. bug, a recent bug fix. Fix that. Um, I think that's about all that's came in recently. It was two weeks ago. Um, there's now a symbol, AP, symbol Java API for declaring symbols, uh, for using symbols in Java code. Um, so I think Uli is using that in his plugins. Um, so you probably saw here that I was using, uh, well, in the design library, you would have seen that I was using the search bar component. Uh, it's really nice just when you come in here, so file's not in there yet, but um, so there's, there's now a search component that you can use and supports icons as well. Um, so rather than scrolling all the way to the bottom of the page, um, I think it auto focuses as well. So as soon as you arrive on here, just type validation. Um, so that's a new component, um, which is also being used on the Manage Jenkins page. And uh, it's registered on this keyword shortcut. So you can just type log and um, go to that page. Ah, okay. So the that that search I had not experimented with yet. The search on the Manage Jenkins page is looking at all the things in that context. So if you type load statistics, it would write, okay, so it, it chooses those items. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, and there's also possible improvement for later is maybe drop some of these configure words as well. It's been noticed when developing this, there's a lot of configure and it mm -hmm. could probably just be changed to system, tool, global security, credential providers. Um, but we may look at that later. Um, I think so. That's just going back through the last few weeks releases. Um, uh, the Tippy pull request was finally merged. Um, I don't know if we mentioned that in the last one, um, but so it's no longer using the, um, I think it was probably Yahoo UI. It was, yeah. So so the Tippy mer the, the Tippy JS replacement of Yahoo UI for tooltips, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's been merged. It's using Tippy everywhere. Um, it's just yeah, quite nice bit of placement. Um, and there's an API in that as well. So you can, there's a couple of knobs that you can tweak as well if you want to have like an interactable menu. So you've got the warnings. So if you had any of these that had any coverage, maybe in core, I don't know, I don't know if this uses it. Oh, there we go. Back on page. It's got a, no. Uh, 
this one here. So you, um, so this is a widget that Warnings NG uses. So this is LCS, but um, uh, see when I hover over this, it doesn't just straight away disappear. So that's what's known as interactable. Um, so you can um, you can set the interactable element if you want to be able to hover over text without disappearing. It's like a data data attribute you can set. Yeah, so I think that's about it. Unless anyone remembers anything else. Thank you. Great results. Amazing. So the 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 breadcrumbs. The breadcrumb changes were one that that came that just arrived in 385 where a number of places that didn't have breadcrumbs before now have them yeah yeah and also if in yes yeah, so there was a while, a while back but in two dot uh yeah two dot three seven five the breadcrumbs were reworked into more modern ones um and yeah, a couple of releases ago we restored highlighting the last breadcrumb because it was missing in quite a lot of places and the api is not the best um but yeah in 2.385 um yeah a whole bunch more places have got breadcrumbs added to configuration page here and Thanks, Tim. Thanks very much. So any other topics that people want to want to highlight on on the uh, what's arrived recently in UX improvements? I could look at the I could show the change log if that will help. Uh, I'm not sure that it tells us anything more than what Tim has already shown us. We did get, I guess, HTML syntax is now available for node descriptions. And there's a hide values in tables edition that was added that's part of the user experience. Oh, oops, I meant to show that. Um, did you want to show that, Mark? Or uh, no, if you if you want to show it, I would I would certainly prefer it if you show it. It's much, much more effective when you show it than when I show it. Yeah, sorry, I missed that one. Um, cool. So yeah, um, so a new change, a new kind of security enhancement um, change was released in the last release. Um, it's not a security fix as such, but it's kind of just um, a nice to have, which helps prevent shoulder surfing and, um, or even just if you're sharing a your screen and possibly um, putting something into a video or whatnot, and you don't want um, all these values to show up. Um, so you can click, at, so all system properties and environment values are hidden by default. Um, and the other thing actually that I didn't mention before is the system information page is now in tabs rather than, rather than one huge page. It would oh, normally nice. um, scroll quite long, um, but here it's just, um, yeah, it's been tabbed. Um, Um, so yeah, and you can click these to show them, click them to hide them, and then you can copy them just fine as well. And if you're copying text, it won't change. Um, I won't click show hide here because I don't know what's here. Yeah, so you can you can show and show and hide all, or reveal individual values. It looks fairly safe, but I'm not going to click it on video. Uh, yeah, very wise. So, so that that transition to to tabs also happened in 385, or yeah, or... yeah, I think it was 385. Great. Cool. The other thing I was going to add is, yeah, I managed. So I managed to close down a lot of pull requests over the New Year's break. Um, we were at about, I think, 35 open um web ui pull requests um and we're now down to um 19 with um i think uh, draft false uh, i think i think 16 of those are ready yeah 
16 of those are ready PRs, I think, if not less. Yeah, so 16 of those are ready, ready PRs and three of them are in draft. Well, thank you. Thank you for that nice, nice merge. Thanks very much for so many. That's great. I think Any other topics that we should highlight? I was just going to say, I think mo most of the remaining ones have issues that need fixes. There's probably only three or four of them that are ready in the current state -ish that with minor changes. Great. Thank you. So next topic was what's coming in UI improvements. Tim, that's a that's a common place we've looked to you. Are there any things you would like to share or highlight? Hey, things that are in progress. I've seen more progress in, in Yahoo UI removal, if I understood correctly. Yeah, so the next one is the um, changing the um, so changing some of the context menus to um, use Tippy instead of Yahoo UI. Um, so that's that's the one that's waiting on security review at the moment. Um, I think did a, I think that one is going pretty smoothly. I don't think I've. Yeah. So yeah, exceptions test is passing on it, and it it all looks it all looks good. The only issues we found last week were some keyboard issues, which were fixed for accessibility. Great. So yeah, just waiting on security review, and then yeah, we'll be able to replace that. I don't think it's all of the context menus. Um, so button drop downs haven't been changed in some places, um, but it's just keeping it as a smaller, simple PR. Um, but yeah, it looks quite nice. You can the screenshots on. Um, I'll send a link if you want to open it. Oh, great! Thank you. Yes. Okay, so here. Nice. And these are these are the screenshots that Jan has placed here are using Tippy, not using Yahoo UI to do the to do the work. Great, thank you so much. That's uh, looks looks marvelous. Thank you. So this is one needs security review. Great, thank you. Any other items you wanted to highlight? I noted that you went to, and it looks like the site is still running. the The prototype site you'd use to show show possible vision for the next next for a future Jenkins UI. Uh, would you be okay if I embedded that URL here, or maybe you could share the URL, or is it something you're you're not really ready for people to to look at and think about what's the future, what might the future be? Yeah, it's fine. The, the link's been posted in Gitter and whatnot. oh, it has. Okay, good. All right. Anything else you wanted to highlight on what's coming in UI improvements? Uh, no, not at the moment. So I've been seeing pipeline graph view improvements arriving that seem seem to be steadily making progress. Anything that you wanted to share there? Right, yeah. For, yeah, so I think I did a whole bunch on that month or so ago. So in yeah, November, quite a lot of work was done um, improving that. Uh, not sure how see so yeah, it probably works on ci.jenkins.io. I'll just check the base version. Yep. Yeah, ci.jenkins.io should have all that. Um, yeah, I've I confess I've turned off Blue Ocean. I'm not using Blue Ocean anymore. I'm just using pipeline graph view on my CI instance and I'm thrilled with it. It's working very well. Let me see. Yep, um, I can show that quickly. Okay. Just. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, this is on ci.jenkins.io. Um, there was quite a lot of fixes done to the, um, well, the algorithm was reworked. Um, so it works a lot more like Blue Ocean. So most so, cases- So Tim, I think we may be seeing a different screen share. I'm seeing uh, GitHub, a GitHub page. Yeah. That Google Chrome window. Got it. Now it's now it's pipeline graph view. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the algorithm's been fixed up. So there's very very limited cases that don't work. Um, it's mostly matrixy sort of things, I think, um, and quite weird cases. But yeah, in general, it works fine. Um, pulled in the card design from the prototype. Um, so. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of cards and then you can expand it um, and using Ionicons and keyboard and everything to expand. Um, and so it integrates here with GitHub projects and just pulls in some information from the details card. Um, yeah, the, I, I love that details card because on a pull request, it shows me the pull request title. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how helpful that is for me when Oh, what 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 was the four eight nine one or five nine five five nine seven gives me no information. It doesn't give me nearly enough information. Whereas pipeline graph view showing me that in the in the tab or in, on that card, select builds by display name. That Matt, that means something to me. Yeah, so you've got repo, which is probably not too relevant in this case. Uh, branch, PR, commit, um, and then when it started, time spent in queue, and how long the build took. So I think, yeah, this is showing one of the cases where it doesn't quite work. So mm, okay. I don't, know, I don't know what's going on there. Um, um, and so that was that card there. And there's also some buttons here. Um, you can rebuild, and then for, I think, simple pipelines, uh, you can also go to the configuration page. Um, this has had quite a lot of work and styling done, so it no longer overflows. Um, it's using um, kind of a cleaner design. Um, it highlights it highlights the active step, um, and then you've got some you've got some step information here as well. Um, if anything failed in a build, it should. There's no. Um, so you can go to an overall stage as well and get stage information. Um, and in the stage information, there'll be a link to any failed steps. So you can click the link to go to any failed steps. And there's an algorithm based on Blue Ocean as well to automatically um, open the um, open the failed step if anything failed, along with being able to rebuild from this page without leaving and going to a different page. Um, I think there's a little bit of, so also that got rebranded from like pipeline graph view to being called, um, I guess it's pipeline graph and pipeline console and they've got new icons. Um, and from the job page, it's called stages um, and a little bit of work. I think maybe a little bit of cleanup was done here and there's a PR that I haven't finished. Um, which reworks that page to use a card layout as well. I'm not sure how far along I got on it. So would we work the stages page to use card layout? Uh, nice. Yeah, I think, I think the, so it was just to prep, bring in more information so you can have a details card on that page and then you could expand it. Um, Right, and uh, it was th this page here just continuously polls currently. Um, I, was, I just turned it off because I didn't have time to re-implement it, but it was pretty annoying. Um, and this is, so this, this goes to a different page. It doesn't pop out a model. Um, so then you get a full page view of it. Um, so I think it was, I think I, the reason I didn't merge it was I wanted to add a bit more to this page, mm -hmm. um, like a details card or something. Um, but not sure. I didn't, or maybe I just wanted a review. I don't know. It was a while ago. I'll get back to it at some point. Yeah. Cool. That's all those.
Thanks, Tim. Thanks very much. So those were the all the topics we had for today. Uh, unless somebody's arrived who wants to talk to feature flag status or keyboard usability or other topics, are there other topics to be brought up? All right, then I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks very much, everyone, for being here. The recording will be posted within the next 24 hours. Thanks a bunch. <laughs>